Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today, we're gonna to talk about the new GeForce GTX 1060, but in a slightly limited capacity. Today is kind of preview announcement uh, time frame. We don't actually have a full review. We don't have uh, our own benchmarks or synthetics to talk about or anything like that. We're just going to give you the information that we can. Uh, and because NVIDIA decided to kind of stagger the release today, they're going to announce the card. Uh, and then on the 19th, the card will actually go on sale. You actually see reviews. We'll have our full analysis, uh, a lot of stuff to talk about. But here it is. This is the GeForce GTX 1060. Looks very similar to the rest of the Pascal lineup. This is a new GPU. This is GP106, not GP104. Smaller GPU, less expensive to make. There are rumors, and I actually thought this would be the case, um, that the GTX 1060 might be a, another GP104 GPU cut down. It turns out to have not been the case. Um, the uh, look and style of the card is very similar to the GTX 1080 and 1070 Founders Edition that I have here. This is the 1060 Founders Edition. Um, it's a little bit less, you know, expensive build quality. It's a lot more plastic. Um, this is not actually a window. It's a black painted piece here um, covering the heatsink. Uh, it is still a blower design, blower style, radial fan design. Um, if you look at the back of it, you can actually tell that the PCB is shorter than normal. It's actually the exact same length as the Radeon RX 480, um, uh, which, is, which is interesting. The cooler still expands uh, or extends past the end of the PCB again, like we saw in the RX 480. Um, interestingly, one little quirk here is that if you notice, the power connection is at the end of the cooler, not at the end of the PCB. Now that shouldn't really change anything. It just means that there are wires that go from where this is mounted in the cooler back to the PCB, as opposed to what we've seen basically in every other instance, uh, including on the RX 480, where the power connector is actually at the end of the PCB and it kind of extends past. The only reason I can think that NVIDIA would have done this uh, is just for looks and style. It makes more sense for the power connector to be at the end. You're not covering up any of the um, uh, kind of industrial design of the cooler and plus we can still get that illuminated GeForce GTX logo in there full size as well. Display connectivity, um, three display port, uh, full size display port, one HDMI 2.0 and one dual link DVI. So this still has dual link DVI while the Radeon RX 480 did not. Now this is a founder's edition. NVIDIA is only going to sell this on NVIDIA.com. Uh, this is going to be $299. It is going to be a limited run. So they're saying it's limited, basically meaning uh, that it will not exist the entirety of the lifespan of the product. Um, partner cards, also available on July 19th, according to NVIDIA, will be selling for $249. And I actually have an MSI card on its way to me as well. So that'll be part of our, our full review of the GTX 1060 when it comes out. So $249 for partner cards, $299 for uh, Founders Editions, only on NVIDIA.com. Obviously, we have to question availability. GP104 uh, has been very hard to get a hold of in either the GTX 1080 or 1070 format. We don't know uh, if the GP106 based chip will be any different, right? Are the yields different? Uh, did they have more time to build up product? Are they rushing this product out to compete against the RX 480? If so, um, that may lead to some availability concerns um, for, for GTX 1060 as that continue to exist for the GTX 1080 and 1070. Although the 1070s are being uh, are a little bit easier to find out, the 1080s uh, are still not. Uh, Specification-wise, what do we know about this card for sure? NVIDIA has only officially stated that it will have 1,280 CUDA cores, which is exactly half of the CUDA cores found on uh, the GTX 1080. It will have a boost clock of 1.7 gigahertz. It will have six gigs of memory running GDDR5, GDDR5 memory running at eight gigabits per second or eight gigahertz. Uh, and it will have 120 watt TDP. Uh, and obviously it's built on the same 16 nanometer process tech that the rest of Pascal uh, has been there. So what's interesting about that? Um, one, they list boost clock of 1.7 gigahertz. They don't list base. I'm pretty positive this is going to be 1,506 megahertz if we follow the same ratios that they have done in the past um, for base to boost uh, clock speeds. So if that's the case, you're at 1,500 megahertz uh, up to 1,700 megahertz with boost. Um, that gets you in the range of 3.85 to 3.9 teraflops of compute capability. Uh, and if, you know, you follow the 1280, uh, if you follow the, the six gigabytes of memory, 
you're not looking at a 256 or 128 bit memory bus, we're probably looking at a 192 bit memory bus. If that's the case, eight gigabits, 192 bits, uh, you're looking at 192 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Um, the 120 watt TDP is a more interesting topic now than it maybe has in the past because of all the issues that the RX 480 has had with its power consumption uh, post launch. Uh, first of all, this has only a six pin connector on it, plus obviously the PCI Express connector. That's 30 watts less than the RX 480, um, which gives it wiggle room, right? So the six pin can draw its full 75 watts or above if they want to go slightly out of spec there. And so leave the PCI Express bus um, you know, fairly modest. Obviously when we do our full review, we'll have all that information and, and there'll be much more kind of uh, attention paid to it because of the issues behind the RX 480. So hopefully Nvidia has given themselves some headroom there. Keep in mind that even with the 120 watt TDP, Nvidia tends to, be, tends to be a little bit more conservative in that regard. So uh, 120 will probably actually be the peak of this card in stock, stock uh, uh, utilization, stock settings. Uh, overclocking, that gives you 30 watts to play with, which is actually 25% um, uh, power target increase if they wanted to do that, right? And obviously with partner cards, we don't know if they'll ship with two sixes or an eight or they'll just stick with the one six. We'll be very curious to see how that goes. Um, $249 for the six gigabyte version of the GTX 1060, $239 for the eight gigabyte version of the RX 480. That's gonna be a very, very interesting comparison um, because the eight gigabyte is clearly what, inv uh, clearly what AMD has been pushing. That's what they put the most stock out of. Uh, and then obviously the controversy of the four to eight gigs that we told you guys initially with our review was going to be possible and it turns out that it was indeed uh, the case. Now, Nvidia claims that the GTX 1060 will offer the performance of a GTX 980 for the $249 price, which would be pretty impressive. They also claim that it's 15% faster and 70% more efficient than the RX 480, the new Polaris 10 GPU from AMD. That's the only really official um, kind of performance metrics that AMD or that Nvidia has given out about this. So um, I would say based on the math of compute units, base clock, uh, boost clock, I think the, the chances of the GTX 1060 actually being faster than the 980 are kind of slim. I think it's going to be a little bit below that. Maybe when you get into VR games where the simultaneous multi-projection and all those capabilities that we've talked about with Pascal since launch can come into play, that there might be a chance that performance uh, of the 1060 will beat the 980 probably pretty well. Um, at stock settings and like normal games, I don't know if it will be the case. Obviously, we'll have to see. Uh, but if it is 15% faster than the RX 480 uh, and it is, you know, just $10 more expensive, um, and you have these potential benefits in VR with SMP, uh, multi-monitor with SMP, and the other kind of stuff that Pascal has brought to the table, it will be a very interesting discussion to have with the full review. Now, I don't have any benchmarks, um, but uh, some leaks have come out over the last couple of days looking at just 3D Mark scores for uh, the GTX 1060. Now, they list a base clock of 1,506 megahertz with a boost clock of 1,709, 1,709 megahertz, which matches up pretty uh, accurately with what NVIDIA has said so far. It has a Fire Mark, uh, or I'm sorry, Fire Strike Ultra score, the GPU score, the graphics score of 2928. Uh, which is 8.5% higher than the score we had on the RX 480, and it is 17% higher than the score of the GTX 970, but it's 6.5% lower than the GTX 980, kind of, again, uh, falling in line with what I expected it would be the case based on just the clock speeds and uh, compute metrics there. So comparing it to the 980, uh, if we just look at that Firemark score, it's not looking at other games or VR or anything like that, it's looking it's like 6% slower, uh, while the 480 looks like it might be 8 or so percent slower uh, than the GTX 1060 itself. So interesting discussions to have uh, with that. Um, you know, NVIDIA is going to use the next, geez, 12 days to kind of talk up the 1060 before all of our reviews go up. I imagine we'll see more leaks between now and then, uh, as is usually the case with these types of things. But I'm very curious to see how this $250 to $240 battle is now going to work, because AMD, I think, I think AMD thought they were going to have more time to themselves in this price, uh, at this price point uh, with Polaris 10, and it may turn out to not be the case. But again, the most important thing for NVIDIA at this point is, can you buy the card on the 19th? Will you actually get availability of the card? And that, I think, is still a very fair uh, criticism of what Pascal has been like so far. So uh, that is it for our preview 
of the GTX 1060 uh, Founders Edition, plus uh, the other, other cards coming soon. Um, check back on July 19th. We'll have our full reviews there up on PCPro.com as well as wherever you're watching this video. Um, so we will talk to you then. Thanks, everyone. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.